Hello guys, this is George Kamiti. Welcome back to our channel. We are still analyzing uh, columns and structs and um, we are using Ula's formula. The question of today says this, determine Ula's critical load for a strut of T section, the flange width being 10 centimeters, the overall depth of the column 8 uh, centimeters and both fringe and web are 1 centimeters thick. The strut is 3 meters long and is fixed at both ends. Take the axis modulus of elasticity to be 2 times 10 raised to the power of 5 newtons per square millimeter. So this is the flange whereas this is the web. The width or the breadth of the flange is 10 centimeters, its depth 1 centimeter. The depth of the web is 7 centimeters, so that will be 8 minus 1. And the thickness of the web, 1 centimeters. Uh, we are being asked to determine the Euler's critical load, and we know that. Euler's critical load is given by this formula pi squared EI divided by the square of the effective length. And we know that when both ends of a strut or a column are fixed, the effective length is given by length divided by 2. Uh, the length of this strut is 3 meters. Therefore, the effective length will be 3 divided by 2. And therefore, the effective length will be 1.5 meters. The next thing we are going to do, we are going to determine the um, center. We are going to determine the position of the neutral axis on this T section of a strut. This T section of, um, of the strut is symmetrical about the YY axis. What do we mean by that? What we mean is that when you cut this section along the YY axis, you are going to get two equal halves. And when we talk about uh, equal halves, we talk about the section being symmetrical. It is balanced along the y, y axis. Uh, therefore, the center of gravity of this section will lie along the y, y axis. We are going to use this table to locate the position of the neutral axis. Or in other words, the position of the center of gravity of this T-shaped section. So on this table, we have the component. We have two components uh, here. We have the fringe as well as the web. Then we are going to determine the area of each, the centroidal distance y from LL. So the, the center of gravity of each component from the distance LL. Then from there, we are going to have AY. That is the uh, area multiplied by the centroidal distance. Starting with the fringe, the area of the fringe is a uh, blend 10 depth 1. So that is going to be 10 times 1, which is 10 square centimeters. And on the other hand, the area of the web will be a breadth of 1 centimeter times a depth of 7 centimeters. You say that is 8 minus this one to get 7. So that is an area of 7 square centimeters. Centroidal distance of uh, the flange from LL, that is the center of gravity of the flange. That will be the distance from LL up to this point, which is 7 centimeters, plus the center of gravity will be half its depth, which is 1 divided by 2, that is 0 0.5 centimeters. Therefore, the centroidal distance uh, of the center of gravity of the flange from LL will be 7 plus 0 0.5, which is 7.5 centimeters. Therefore, centroidal distance 7 plus uh, 0 0.5, that is 
7.5 centimeters. For the web, in the center of gravity of the web will be half its depth. So that is half of 7, which is 3.5. So that is 7 divided by 2. We get 3.5 centimeters. And on this side, we have AY for the fringe 10 times 7.5, that is 75. And for the web, 7 times 3.5, that is 24.5. 24.5. Then we are going to have the sum of AY, that is 75 plus 24.5, which is 99.5 centimeters raised to the power of 3. For the area 10 plus 7, that is 17 square centimeters. Then to get the position of the center of gravity of this T-section, we are going to have this um, bar Y will be given by the summation of AY divided by the summation of A. Summation of AY, we got it as 99.5. Uh, summation of A, we got it as 17. Therefore, that is going to give us uh, bar Y being 5.85 centimeters. Therefore, the position of um, 5.85 centimeters. Therefore, this, uh, position of the center of gravity of this I section will be uh, 5.85 centimeters. If this is 3.5, let's approximate it at this point. So, this is the center of gravity of this T shaped uh, section of a strut, and that is the position of the neutral axis. The neutral axis will pass along that section. So, as we have said, the CG will lie along the YY axis. So, this distance from LL is 50, that is, is 5.85 centimeters. Very good. Uh, from there, we are going to determine the moment of inertia about both the XX axis as well as the YY axis. And we are going to use the least moment of inertia between the two moments of inertia. Very good. So let's begin with determining the moment of inertia about the x-x axis. In this case, we have two sections. We have the flange. We have the flange. And we have the web. So the moment of inertia will be moment of inertia of the flange plus that one of the web. Beginning with the moment of inertia of the flange, this is going to be given by BD cubed divided by 12 plus the area of the flange into um, Y minus bar Y squared. So this Y minus bar Y will be the distance from the neutral axis to the center of gravity of the flange. The center of gravity of the flange. So this is the section we are talking about. And it will be given by Y, distance from LL to center of gravity of the flange, 7.5 minus bar Y. That is the position of the neutral axis. Therefore, the moment of inertia of the flange will be given by the breadth is 10 centimeters the depth, 1 cm, divide this by 12, plus the area of the flange, 10 cm. Y is 7.5, and bar Y is 5.85. 5.85, we square that. So we are going to have 10 times 1 less to the power of 3 divided by 12. That will be 0 0.833 plus, plus 10 times 7.5 minus 5.85. That is 1.65. 1 1.65 1 uh, then squared. 
So this is going to be 0 0.833 plus uh, 1.65 squared. That is uh, 2.7225. And we are going to have 0 0.833 plus 27.225. And this will give us the moment of inertia of the flange about the xx axis to be 28.058 centimeters raised to the power of 4. Good. From there, we go to the moment of inertia of the web about the xx axis. So the moment of inertia of the web about the xx axis will be given by BD cubed divided by 12 plus the area of the web into bar y minus y squared. So bar y minus y is the distance from the neutral axis to the center of gravity of the web. So this section here, that's what we are talking about. So this is going to be the breadth of the web is one centimeter. So you got one times its depth, seven centimeters, divide that by 12 plus the area of the web is seven into bar y 5.85 minus y 3.5 and then we square that. So that is going to be 5.5 minus 3.5. I mean 5.85 minus 3.5 to get uh, that uh, section. So 7 cubed divided by 12, that is uh, 28.58 plus 7 times. 5.85 minus 3.5, that is 2.35. So here we got 2.35 and then we are going to square it. So 2.35 squared, that is 5.5225. So you are going to have 28.58 plus 7 times 5.5225, that happens to be 38.6575. When we add the two, we are going to have the moment of inertia of the web about the xx axis to be 67.2375 centimeters raised to the power of four. So that is the moment of inertia of the web about the xx axis. Therefore, the total moment of inertia about the xx axis be given by moment of inertia of the fringe about the xx axis that is 28.058 plus that one of the web about the xx axis 67 67.2375 so when we add uh, that, we are going to have 5, 5, this is uh, 9, 2, that is uh, 5, 9. So the moment of inertia about the xx axis of this T-shaped section of a strut, 95.2955 centimeters raised to the power of 4, raised to the power of 4. Very good. Then from there, we determine the moment of inertia about the yy axis. And this will be given by moment of inertia about the yy axis of the flange plus moment of inertia about the yy axis of the web. So this will result to the moment of inertia about the yy axis is going to be moment of inertia about the y y axis of the frame that is db cubed over 12 plus that one of the web db cubed over 12 so in this case we are exchanging this was d this was bb cubed whereas this about the y y axis db cubed good so that one of the fringe is going to be the depth of the flange is one centimeters its breadth is 10 centimeters therefore 10 cubed divide this by 12 
that one of the web the depth of the web is seven centimeters and its breadth is one centimeter therefore one cube divide this by 12. moment of inertia will now be given by um 10 cube that is a thousand divided by 12 that happens to be 83.33 plus 7 divided by 12 that happens to be 0 0.5 8 and when we add the two we are going to have 83.91 centimeters raised to the power of raised to the power of 4 uh, when we now compare the two moments of inertia that is about the xx axis and that of the y uh, that about the y y axis we are going to find that the least moment of inertia is the moment about the yy axis, which is 83.91 centimeters raised to the power of 4. And that means that this section or the strut will try to buckle about the yy axis because that is uh, the section with the least moment of inertia. So that is the moment of inertia we are going to use or to apply in this formula. Well, good. So the Euler's critical load, that is P Euler, will now be given by pi squared times the Young's modulus of elasticity, 2 times 10 raised to the power of 5, times the least moment of inertia, that is 83.91 centimeters raised to the power of 4. We convert to millimeters raised to the power of 4. One centimeter is equivalent to 10 millimeters. When we raise a centimeter to the power of 4, we also raise the millimeters to the power of 4, and that is going to be times 10 raised to the power of 4. Then we divide this by the effective length, the square of the effective length. Effective length is 1.5 meters, converged to millimeters, that will be 1,500 millimeters. We square that. And when we do so, we are going to get a critical load, P Ula, of 736,140.89 newtons. We can simply convert this to kilonewtons, and that is going to be 736,140.89 divided by 1,000, which will give us a critical load of 736.14089 kilo newtons so that's how we go about this question and ladies and gentlemen we are through if it was a benefit to you please consider hitting that subscription button if you are not yet a subscriber to this channel thank you very much let's meet in yet another lesson